Oh, well, let's quickly talk about, you know, the economy now. And so it, it concerns our dependency on oil. It's still the breakfast. And Plus TV Africa, we're going to be joined by an expert, Hussain Olariwaju. Hussani Olariwaju. Uh, he's a digital financial service expert right here in Lagos. But just before we're being joined by Hussani, uh, the Nigerian export promotion believes that the nation's economy, talking about Nigeria, can thrive better without oil if the non-oil sector was prioritized. Well, Nigeria is blessed with abundant non-oil resources ranging from agricultural produce to mineral resources, the likes of Coco House, the Liberty Stadium, the Granite Pyramids, and many other assets, including free education in, in the western part of the country in Nigeria, were from the sweats of agriculture. Now, Nigeria's federal and state government remains heavily dependent on oil revenues, relying on it to deliver public goods and the use of all dollars to service debt and bluster the national currency. The pandemic, that's the COVID, heightened the potential loss to the Federation, uh, where the federal government's uh, loss was recorded. More than 50% revenue was dependent on oil as the shutdown of global economic activities, the onslaught of pandemic and sharp decline in oil demand in 2020 uh, left the government unable to meet its 2020 revenue projection. That's a lot. And it feels like every other time the international community sneezes, Nigeria quicks. The federal government had to sw slash the budget by more than uh, a, you know, a half or thereabout just to meet realistic 20%, reducing the benchmark price and production projection from $57 at a time per barrel to $30 per barrel, anticipating production volume from 2.2 million barrels per day to 1.7 million barrels per day consecutively to accommodate the new realities. You also want to talk about the theft, the fact that we have not been able to live up to OPEC, uh, you know, quota that's been allocated to exporting or oil exporting countries. Usani Olariwaju, a digital financial service experts join the conversation. Hussein, can you hear us, please? Yes, I can hear you. Good morning. Good morning. So um, I'd like to share your thoughts. Do you think that we can actually uh, thrive as an economy highly dependent on non-oil sector, especially with the structure of government that we practice, where you have the center being very powerful and the units running to the center for allocation. Uh, thank you. Um, from my perspective, I believe Nigeria is um, having that capacity to diversify if the leaders are so willing to do so. Right? We have, uh, uh, I will give an example of a particular, the richest man in Africa, Dangote. Dangote do not have any involvement in oil. He practically do his business based on stones, natural resources. Cement are based on natural resources of stones in Nigeria, and go to consumable sugars and water view. And he's still having his turnover money more than those who specialize in oil. So that's a typical example to say. By the time we, the leaders are ready to first of all focus on. Uh, the consumables, what we consume, we begin to produce what we consume. So that should be a legal backing, probably from the legislators to uh, concept from the executive. If there is a willpower, we can diversify from it. Because naturally, what uh, we, a lot of monies are being spent on, considering the civil servant states, the likes of Kwara, the likes of Niger, and some other civil servant states, people actually spend chunk of their money on consumables. So if we begin to produce what we consume, it will definitely increase uh, the value of Naira. It will also increase the revenue. And most importantly, data capturing that is ongoing. If we have the opportunity to capture all data of uh, the farmers, the individuals that are uh, selling all these consumables, then government can have high revenue generated from tax and what have you. So it's doable. From my own end, I can see that it's doable. 
Well, a uh, very fantastic perspective. But the question still remains whether or not we can uh, be non-oil dependent, we can thrive as an economy, not on the oil economy, but, you know, on the non-oil sector. So I'm asking, with the kind of structure that we practice where there's a lot of concentration of powers in the center, that's the federal government, it leaves the component units running to the center for allocation. Do you think that, you know, so, the non-oil sector can thrive? Is that not a challenge? It's, it's a challenge, right? But by the time you look critically down the stream, the so-called uh, dependent on oil economy is profiting some silent set of people who have oil block and who wants, uh, by all means, to ensure that Nigeria continue to depend on the oil produce because of the uh, proceeds they, they catch out. So what we're saying is, for Nigerians to be dependent, to be independent of oil, we need to have a system of government with a way power one, we need to start uh, saying each state to begin to generate revenue instead of uh, expecting allocations from the federal government. Each state should begin to generate revenue by developing the resources in each state and remitting a certain percentage of the profit generated to the federal government. That is what we call, we look into as a decentralized government where each state begins to cater for its own need. So it is the willpower from the government to actually make this happen. So uh, if we, if the government from the parliament to executive are ready, so it's a matter of readiness. We have what it takes. We have curtains, we have raw materials, iron core, we have agri produce from different perspectives. It will amaze you to look into uh, to look into cocoa, for example. In the first half of this year, cocoa exportation has actually generated one around 14.1 billion naira to Nigeria economy. Imagine that cocoa is what you use for your uh, end produce of the likes of um, teas and what have you that we coffees and what have you that we take and we import them back in a refined manner at high cost. So what we are saying is by the time we begin to produce a lot autonomy for state autonomy to be able to start producing, start generating the internal revenue and remitting to the federal government to reduce the independent of allocations uh, expectations from oil. Hmm. But you say the government, when you say the government, which of the government are you referring to? We have three tiers of government, the federal government, the state and the local. So which of the government are, you, are we talking about now? It, it has to start from the top, from the federal down to the states. Hmm. But, uh, you know, let's get back to it. <laughs> So uh, you say that the federal government, the conversation should start from the top. But here we have state government who understand that they have states. Recently, there's been a lot of complaint with the you know, federal allocations and the deductions because of the fact that there's a shortfall with earnings from oil and all of the theft is going on that has actually affected our production outputs and, of course, our earnings. And so uh, should this conversation be left to the hands of the center not the federal government. This federal government you talk about, in each state, you have a representation where you have state house of assembly members, you have members representing different constituencies. So how come this, the, you know, the state governors are not having the, this conversation about uh, having resources controlled by themselves? How come they're not engaging? We know that the different, different forum and fora where, where, where they meet, the governor's forum. So, so should this conversation be about the center or it should be about the units? So uh, I'll give an example, a typical example of Lagos State in the era of uh, President Olusegun Obasanjo, where uh, the state led by um, Tsunobu, you know, he created more local governments naming it LCDA. Federal government went against it. Our federal government practically says, we will stop your allocation. But the state survived. How? Because the state concentrated 
on utilizing the resources within the state and generate revenue through that resources. So I think with that, the state survived for months before they, they got the allocation in bulk in returns. So what we are saying is, if the government is at that weight power, if the government, federal government says, this is where we are going, this is the new dimension, decentralized uh, government system, we will see it happen. It is there. It is just the weight power, and you have to have something to push for it to happen. So it just don't happen by mere saying. It has to be a push, and it has to be a willpower. There's, there has to be a willpower rather to get it done. I, I want us to be very, you know, real because there's, there's always a tendency to push the blame on the federal government as it is. But you have the state government. Where, I mean, we're a federating unit with 36 states, including the FCT. And so I know that you, you probably might be conversant with the fact that uh, 44 bills have been put out within the period of, you know, constitutional review. And we probably might be running out of time now. Uh, 25 states have reviews, refused to vote on constitutional amendment bill. Uh, and they have actually stated the reason. And four bills that they have refused to give assent to, one of them is the issue of state policing or the state police, the issue of, you know, state judicial council, uh, among others. And we know that if, you know, this government or this state actually give a yes or a not to this, it would also give an excuse for them to have uh, or control their resources. Because if you control uh, the state police or your judiciary, then there might be need for financing, which gives room for, you know, controlling your resources. But they have refused. So what exactly are we really saying that, you know, the central government should be, it's the problem of the central government? So uh, it's, it's sad to note that uh, we have people in position who don't know their own news or the opportunities that is present in front of them. And uh, going back to history, uh, I believe part of the reason why some of the governments uh, or state governments are trying to reject it is because of the liability they acquire over time from their past, from their predecessors, you know, and they have to serve in some loans and what have you. And so they want to continue depending on the uh, uh, federal government to get things sorted out. However, if we look deeply in that, there is a lack of communication and the understanding from even the legislative to the executive themselves. So we have to have uh, people in government who have that willpower. Because if there is no willpower, we will continue throwing blame games, right? So this uh, issue of uh, internet generated revenue do not start from uh, a state for a like legal state alone. I could recall that um, during the military era of President, uh, head of state, that's Sunny Abacha, you know, there are some states like Niger State who do not have uh, adequate allocations from the head of state, which is from the federal, but they generated revenue from tax, IGR, and what have you, and they, are living, they were living fine before the current dispensation. So I believe there should be a willpower, and it is the willpower that will actually uh, let us drop the issue of blame throwing, throwing and focus on what is needed to do. So oh. what is lacking is basically willpower. Willpower from? From the states, from the state level. All right, then. But, but so moving forward, how do we, you know, then solve the problem? Uh, I probably might predict that you would say that uh, the states actually need willpower, but would there be any other options where we can compel or, you know, move forward and see beyond what, you know, those who are calling the shots are saying? Is there anything that could be done, you know, from the legislative arm of government, really? Yes, so uh, we, we have to have, um, from the federal legislat legislator, uh, a, a system where this legislative laws votes, you know, to ensure they, they can pass their support from the local where they represent their constituencies to ensure that the state, go, uh, the state legislators also buy into the idea and vote for that. Then the executive will not have any other choice other than to consent to what the legislators have, you know. 
So it is based on willpower, and everybody has to, beyond just sending you, communicate down to their constituency level to ensure this is achieved. Well, thank you so much, Usani Olari Waju, uh, for being with us this morning and sharing your thoughts on the need for us, you know, to move ahead from uh, an oil-dependent economy to other sectors. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, that's the size of a conversation this morning on The Breakfast. It's fine to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. We'll definitely return tomorrow with more interesting conversation. I am Messi Ibukbo. We'll join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. Please stay with us.